Kia ora everybody and welcome back to Civilization 6. Today I'm going to talk about housing. How does the housing mechanic actually work is what I'm going to cover first and then in the second half of this video I'll give you some tips and tricks for essentially how to get more housing. So how does the mechanic work? Well housing primarily acts by putting a constraint on population growth beyond food supply in a city. Uh, in practice, it means that a city will need housing the more it grows, even if it has more than enough food to feed your population. And historically, that makes sense. If you think about uh, cities can only grow as many houses as they have, and once they start to become overcrowded, once you start to have more population than housing, you run into big problems, and people will be less likely to want to live there because they can't have a house to live in, right? So it does fundamentally make sense. Uh, if you go map options, uh, uh, indeed map lenses, sorry, and then hit the settler lens, you can get an idea for which areas are exposed to fresh water and where you can settle. Why do I bring up fresh water? Well, fresh water is the first housing mechanic that you're probably going to encounter in your game. Uh, fresh water provides more housing than anything early on. So you want to settle a city near a river. And you can see looking around this map that all of these main cities are on rivers. If you settle on a river, you will get an immediate bonus to housing. You can see in the settler lens here that these tiles are light green. That means that they have access to water, but they don't have access to fresh water. And if you have a look at the key up in the top right, you can see that fresh water gives plus three housing, while coastal water like this, which is still available to settle on, gives only plus one. Uh, no water gives nothing, and of course the red demonstrates areas where I can't settle. So here's a great example. I can't settle in the red because there are other cities too close by. These tiles here are reflected as white tiles. They have no water and provide no housing. You're going to struggle. These ones provide plus one housing, uh, sorry, plus three housing because they are adjacent to this river. And these tiles provide plus one because they're on the coast. They have water, but it's not fresh water. That's the first mechanic to look out for, and I would really strongly recommend settling your cities on a freshwater source, or at least one tile away, so that you can connect to the freshwater with an aqueduct later in the game. We'll get to that shortly. Uh, as your cities develop, housing is mostly more dependent on tile improvements, on buildings, and on districts, rather than the fresh water itself. So if you're settling a city later in the game, you can see here in, in this lobby, which I uh, live-streamed the other day, by the way, twitch.tv forward slash jumbopixel, shameless plug, uh, you can see that, you know, it's quite late in the game, and so I can afford to maybe take some risks and settle cities like this one that uh, don't have a lot of water, uh, and maybe, you know, I could settle a city in here, connect on this hill, get some production, connect to these resources, maybe here or something, and, and build an aqueduct. I don't know. There are options, but as I said, as you move through the game, you're going to be reliant more on things you build within a city rather than the geography around you. So, the next thing we need to know is, what does housing look like in the city? How can I tell how much housing I have? And how do I know when it's time to get more, right? You need to get a base understanding for it. So... When you look at a city like this, you can see that this city here is struggling with amenities, right? And you'll get a similar uh, pop-up when you're struggling for housing. But you can actually check it manually as well. If you click the city, down in the bottom right of the screen, you can see how much housing it has available and how much it's using. So uh, this city here is using 9 out of a total 11 housing. And in 3 turns, it's going to grow from size 9 to 10, which will put it at 10 out of 11. That first number is simply the population of a city. Uh, again, if I click this city, you'll see it's a size 10 city, it's about to grow to size 11, and it's got 10 out of 12 housing. Those two are fine, but only just. And that's because housing impacts growth in a very specific way. If you have two or more free houses, like both of these cities did, then your growth rate, regardless of food, your growth rate, uh, ass sorry, assuming you have the right amount of food, your growth rate from food will be 100%, totally normal. If you have only one spare housing available, your growth rate from food is halved. So this city here, my capital, has 17 out of 18 housing. Its growth rate is halved. And you can tell, I mean, look, it's going to take 15 turns to grow. I'm sure it's bigger than my other cities, but when these are growing in just a couple of turns, this one should not be taking 15 turns. That is ridiculous. At 0 to negative 4 housing available, 
your growth rate from food will be shrunk down to 25%. And if you're in a deficit of five or more housing, your growth rate will be zero. Regardless of how much food you are producing, your city will never grow. That is why housing is so, so very important in this game. Fundamentally, no matter how much food you have, if you don't have two or more spare houses, your city is going to be at growing at a heavily reduced rate. A very heavily reduced rate. So this should be a red flag for me. I can tell even more detail if I click toggle city details. On the left hand side of my screen now I have a full breakdown of all of the metrics that are going on inside of the city, where it's getting its amenities, where it's getting how much food it has, where it's getting its housing, lots of great details. And on this first tab, the citizens amenities and housings tab, down the bottom here you can see I'm getting eight housings from buildings, three from my civics, two from tile improvements, five from access to fresh water, and currently none from great people. That puts me at a total of 18, and you can see population growth rate is slowed by 50%. If I get just one more housing in this city, it'll grow twice as fast. And that brings me on to the final major segment of this video, and that's sources of housing. How do we get it? Well, we've already discussed the interaction between cities and water as a source of housing, right? We've covered that at the start of the video because that's probably the first thing you'll be thinking of. There are also things unique to certain civilizations that can provide housing. I won't cover them in detail in this video, but, you know, for example, um, there are some uh, unique city-state improvements that provide housing. Uh, certain civilizations will have extra. Australia gets plus three housing for coastal cities, so there's less of a reliance on fresh water. Uh, Coupe gets plus three housing in the palace, which is just a nice added bonus from the start, but assuming you don't have those things to fall back on, you're going to need to start building housing. So how do you do it? Well, there are a few different ways. Buildings and districts are one. The aqueduct is classically a fantastic one at providing housing. You can see here, it's a district that provides uh, this city with a source of fresh water. Now this city already has it, so the bonuses of building an aqueduct are slightly reduced, but they still exist. Uh, so cities that already have fresh water get plus two housing. Just bam, plus two housing. So if I build an aqueduct in three turns, I'm going to get plus three housing. Unfortunately, there's only two spots where I can build it. That tile is producing an incredible amount of food, and this one has a farm on it, which is uh, also providing some housing. I'll get to that in a minute. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to smash down an aqueduct right here. That is the first way to uh, build housing in your city, and it's through those district improvements. The aqueduct, by far, is the most significant one you can build. Uh, it's just such an incredible boost to housing, but there are also some others. Uh, the neighborhood, for example, which uh, becomes available in the industrial era, is purposefully built for providing housing. It's a specific district designed just for housing. Um, it, it came. It was actually introduced to the game a little bit later than uh, the aqueduct, but uh, it's absolutely there. The dam as well, you can see another district that provides instant plus three housing. And the preserve grants up to three housing based on appeal. So you can build some districts to generate housing fast. Uh, also, certain buildings will give you um, various boosts to housing depending on uh, the size of your city and the other things that you have built. Um, you know, for example, uh, the best possible way for a city uh, to build extra houses on the coast next to fresh water. Uh, if you build a harbour and a lighthouse, that'll provide you with extra housing. And then you build an aqueduct and a dam if you have floodplains. And in total, you could have 12 housing in a city purely through those buildings. So five from fresh water, two from the lighthouse, two from the aqueduct, and three from the dam. Uh, tile improvements are the other main way that you'll do it, and they're the final main way that I'll cover here. I actually have a worker that I've prepared earlier who's ready to demonstrate <laughs> for us just what that means. So I have this builder, and you can see there are some tiles that I haven't built farms on yet. So I'm going to walk, slowly walk, jeez, <laughs> I turned my settings off, my auto move settings off um, for another video, and clearly 
<laughs> that's still in still in play which is fine uh, so the workers can obviously build tile improvements and these tile improvements can provide additional housing so each farm plantation uh, camp and fishing boats will provide a small amount of housing for population and you got to watch out for those natural disasters they will absolutely tank your housing yikes so close by uh, i'll just quickly skip through all of this so yes so the workers uh can build tile improvements on uh farms pastures plantations camps and fishing boats which will provide additional housing uh, usually it's 0 0.5 housing per improvement uh with three tiles within three tiles of course of the city center so you can see as i mouse over this improvement it'll give me plus one food to this tile and 0 0.5 housing for the city so i'm just gonna bam quickly spam that out and in one turn thanks to that worker the city has an extra 0 0.5 housing and the final way to increase your housing in a more fluid way uh, fluid because this can change over time unlike buildings in a city or districts in a city which will probably stand the test of time unless you're destroying them or or in an outrageous war uh, these policies are more fluid right you take them in you take them off but you can see here that some of them are really specifically designed around fixing housing as an issue uh, there are five which come to mind for me the first is insula which gives plus one housing in cities with two or more district from the classic era then you have civil prestige in medina quarter from the medieval era and finally new deal and collectivism in the modern era Th those are really like fundamental housing policies and you can see one of them here medina quarter plus two housing in all cities with at least three specialty districts so that's uh, two of my cities have that so i'm going to get plus four housing uh, which is fantastic uh, this policy here is already providing me with some housing as is this one uh, this one isn't so because i'm a little short on housing i'm gonna plop that in there and confirm my policies and that will give me an instant extra housing bonus I can combine that with additional tile improvements to really boost the housing in my city and I'd recommend that you do turn to co uh, your cultural policies and that you ensure that you keep some space and keep them in because they're a great way to instantly add housing. And the other way to track down some extra housing if you're so inclined is uh, to build wonders now there uh, there aren't many and they're not fantastic at it but um, off the top of my head Angkor Wat provides plus one housing the Great Bath three hanging gardens two and the temple of artemis provides three but really you can't beat the humble worker moseying around on your extra tiles building a farm generating plus five housing by the time you've adjusted your cultural policies as well you'll see as we head in for the final reveal in just a matter of a few turns we've turned the city around from taking 15 turns to grow to just three and just before i jump in there and conclude the video if you did enjoy this video and you like this format and these tips and tricks it really mean a lot to me if you'd leave um, a like rating on the video we're a small and growing community and it's wicked to see and every time you generous kind people leave a like or comment down below it actually does push the video out to a wider audience helps me grow and motivates me to make more content so thanks so much now without any further ado and any more rambling <laughs> as you can see the city now has access to 23 housing and i've literally done that over the space of a couple of turns i sent a worker out to build some farms which generated me half a housing each we changed our cultural policies uh, and we built an aqueduct and that was it that was it literally four turns in the game and i went from being worried about housing in this city to having more than enough right remember we need to keep at least two additional housing above our city's population level and now i'm at 17 out of 23 and you can see we're growing in three turns there's no negative anything the the ai is still giving me some tips on how i could improve my housing which is great you know thanks so much but we're happily and comfortably housed and my city is growing once more that'll do for today's video on housing in civ 6 thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time